Now what could be more epic than a drift trike? Well of course, an electric drift trike. And that's what we're going to be building today. Before this project, we need a bike. And I didn't want to go out and buy a bike because that would uh, just blow the budget right out of the water. So I was walking down the street and I was thinking to myself, man, how am I going to get my hands on a free bike? And then this kid rode past me on his bike. So to cut a long story short, here's the bike that we're going to be using to make this. So let's go chop it up. So the only parts that we really need are the forks and the down tube or whatever this is called. The rest just comes off and all this funky business can also come off. to make a unicycle. Now that we're done with this, it's time to work on the frame. So for the frame, we're gonna be using this 50 by... ...25 mil hollow section. We're gonna start by cutting off about 500 mils of this. So now what we've got to do is we've got to attach these two pieces together like that. But how are we going to do that? Well, I'm glad that you asked. What you're going to do is you want to grab your nice sharpie and then you want to estimate the radius of this hole here. And then once you've done that, you want to uh, eyeball it and guess that the radius looks something, something like that. So, hope that you got it right. So now what we've got to do is we've got to weld these two pieces together. Well, there you have it. There is our work in progress frame. I do need to change up a couple things. Uh, mainly, I believe that this, the bike part, is on the wrong angle. I think it needs to be steeper. So I'll need to change that. But before we do that, let's attach the axle. But first, we've got to build the axle. I'm going to be quite honest. I don't know what any of these nuts and bolts are for or where they go. So this is going to take a while. So with a bit of video magic, I got the axle all put together, but there is a problem. That problem being, of course, that I put these in the wrong positions. This is supposed to be at the back, so I'm gonna have to cut this off and reverse it. But there is some good news. I don't need to readjust the front half. I just need to re-weld that. So let's do that in three, two, one. Huh. You know, I always see people do that, and I think it works, but I guess I'm wrong. Oh, beautiful, I wasn't filming that whole time. Well, anyway, so I cut this off, and then it's not straight at all, but luckily, your boy is just gonna fill it up with weld.
now that we have this on the right way, we can get to fitting the axle. So now what I've done is I've attached the front wheel so that we can see what height we actually want to get to our rear axle. And what we're going to do is we're going to line it up like that. And then we can just lift it up and see about what height we want it. Probably about that high, something like that. It is now time to mount those batteries on this drift track. Now if you had been smart or you had a larger budget, you would have bought lithium polymer batteries, which are twice as expensive, but you get way smaller batteries, they probably charge faster, and for the most part they're just better, except for the fact that they can catch fire, but that wasn't in the limit of my budget. So here we have four lead acid batteries, and to mount it, we're going to be using this, uh, what it looks like angle section, but it's actually half of some, I believe it's a 40 by 40 box section, which I cut in half with an angle grinder. And I know you're wondering, how did you get such amazing cuts? Well, I tell you, viewer, it's just pure skill. That's all there really is to it. But now, we're gonna cut some lines in there, fold it around, and then we'll have ourselves a mount. Beautiful. So what I'm about to do is something that most professionals wouldn't recommend, or really anyone with a brain. And that's gonna be, I'm gonna be welding some galvanized steel. Now there are many consequences to this, like if you inhale the fumes, high chance you die or get seriously ill. But that's really where they end. So I mean, may as well give it a go. And now that we have that sorted, it's on to the gear for the motor. And that is what we've got right here. But you see, the problem is, this doesn't fit on the shaft. This is the gear that came with the motor, and this is how big the shaft is. So what we've got to do is, we've got to align both of these gears. And you're wondering, what scientific method have you come up with to do something incredibly difficult like this? Well, you'll be quite pleased to know that I'm going to eyeball it. So as it turns out, there is quite a large amount of wobble, but I think that'll be okay. Probably. But that also we're going to move on. This back section could do with a bit of a lift. After yet another clothing change, it is time to mount the motor. Now at this point you're probably wondering why it is that I went electric. Well, I live in a bit of an urban area and I thought it would be a bit standoffish to go out there with a petrol engine. So I decided to go electric instead. Before we can actually mount the motor, we need to set the chain tension. But before we can even do that, we need to shave down this side with an angle grinder because, well, it's actually, actually like, it doesn't, uh, doesn't fit too well. So I'll have to sort that out.
Well, now that's sorted, we can go on to finish the frame. And then, hey, we'll almost be done. That'd be great. None of you have been waiting for the electronics. We are finally up to wiring it all up. And the people at Australia Post very kindly have not delivered the thing that I ordered about a month or two ago, which was just pretty simple, just, just some wire. So instead for this 1800 watt motor, I'm going to salvage some wire from this extension cord. Is this an idea I suggest? Absolutely not. But, in the name of science, we shall do it anyway. Now, we get to wire up the ESC. Oh my god, we got it. I've never been more happy in my entire life. Couldn't tell you how happy I am. Look at that. So, guess what? It works. It works. And what you're hearing there, that's the sound of my... That's the sound of my sprocket not being sanded properly. But it's, it's not great, but it, it, it's okay. It's really not very good at all, actually. But anyway, I have made a horrible mistake. The motor is on backwards. Now, I can reverse the speed. I can, I can reverse the direction of the motor. But you see, the problem with that is that if I do that... Then, you see, then it, if I go into reverse, the top speed is like cut in two. We, and we can't have that. I'm going to try and figure something out with the uh, wiring. Otherwise, I'm going to have to flip that motor around. And that won't be a fun time. So once again, I've been saved by my best mate, Punjab. And his... It turns out all I needed to do was swap a couple wires, and now it goes in the right direction. So this is great, because we still don't have the wire, but what we do have is the opportunity now to finish up.
it's done. And what a beauty. But now I know what you're saying, Doss. Are you about to play out uh, an overdone cliche? And for that I would say, yes. And then you might say, well Doss, that looks a whole lot like an old shirt and you've just draped it over your seat and then stapled it to the bottom. And say, yeah, that's exactly what I've done. But that all aside, this thing is incredible. But anyway, I got back out there. And this really is an incredible machine. But what I wouldn't recommend is going into a parking lot and racing around doing donuts for that. That's sort of immature stuff that adolescents do. In fact, I've even got a clip of some kid doing it here. And you can tell that's not me because I'm wearing a different shirt. All that being said though, I had a great time, oh, and I know you're asking what's the battery life, what's the range? Well, I couldn't tell you what the battery life is, and I couldn't tell you what the range is. But what I could tell you is I did make it to a local supermarket, and then to the next supermarket, which was honestly only like 200 meters away from the first one, even though they're the exact same supermarket. Doesn't make much sense if you ask me. And then I also made it to the hardware store, and I made it back to my house. So, it's got all the range that I would need. And really, the biggest flaw is its low clearance, as I shall demonstrate here. If I was the man who designed it... Wait, I was the man who... If I were to, do, if I were to design this again, I would have either added more clearance or I would have put some sort of wheel in the middle so it didn't just scrape along every slight inclination in the pavement. But all this being said, I hope you've enjoyed the video and watching me build this and I hope you stick around for the future. And I will see you.
in the next video, whenever and whatever that is.